गुड इवनिंग टूडे सेशन इज बेसिकली द सेकेंड लेक्चर ऑन द मॉडर्न फिजिक्स All right. Now, what are we going to do in our today's session, students? We are going to look at your photoelectric effect, isn't it? Now, exactly, what is photoelectric effect? Your photoelectric effect is very simple phenomena. Pure modern physics. Me, if there is any topic which is like very very simple, my dear students, it is exactly this. All right. होता क्या है बेसिक फंडा मैं आपको बता देता हूं ठीक है द बेसिक कंसेप्ट आई एम टेल यू एंड आफ्टर दैट वी आर गोइंग टू लुक एट द न्यूमरिकल्स ऑल राइट नाउ द फर्स्ट थिंग इज दैट वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट फोटो इलेक्ट्रिक इफेक्ट इज के देर आर लाइट रेस ऑल राइट यू कैन सी दिस लाइट रेस दैट आर कमिंग एंड हिटिंग दिस मेटल सर्फेस ये जो नीचे है इट्स अ मेटल सर्फेस ऑल राइट नाउ एज दे कम एंड हिट द मेटल सर्फेस समथिंग इज गोइंग टू हैपन वॉट इज गोइंग टू हैपन Electrons will get ejected, but before studying all that in detail, okay, let me just talk about that these light rays which are coming and striking the surface, they definitely will be exerting some force on the metal surface. All right, light exerting force. Now probably that's that sounds a little weird though, but light is also applying a force on the metal surface. it has some energy isn't it the light rays which is coming and striking the surface it has got some energy and that is one of the important feature why it is going to eject the electrons we are going to come to that particular point it will have some power for sure all right and momentum clear now we individually will look at finding out the expression of each of these quantities that is force energy power and momentum of the incident rays which are coming and striking the metal surface all right students so chalo let us look at each one of them one by one so i've taken a blank sheet out here and uh let us go back and let us see the force now before we find out the force aspect clear I would like to talk about the momentum thing first. All right, because ultimately force होता क्या है? It is nothing but rate of change of momentum. That is delta p by delta t. Is it it, my dear students? So firstly, I need to know that light rays which are coming and striking the metal surface, it is coming with what momentum? And what is the final momentum? What is the initial momentum? What is the final momentum? Now that will totally depend on the surface. on which the light rays are coming and striking there are two things that you need to understand one that this surface could be reflecting or it could be absorbing all right now what do i mean by this agar absorbing hoga my dear students all the light rays which are coming and striking the surface it is going to absorb everything so final momentum will be equal to zero all right and if it is reflecting then definitely it is going to go back all right and we are going to understand that as it is reflecting the final momentum and the initial momentum is going to be the same clear how do we find out the momentum first of all okay see momentum initial i can write it as h divided by lambda right de broglie wavelength ke concept se hum ye nikal sakte hain that the initial momentum will be h divided by lambda let us take the case when it is absorbing clear let us take the case when it is absorbing case number 1 so final momentum will be equals to 0 which implies the modulus of the change <coughs> change in momentum will be h divided by lambda okay now my dear students very important point now this is the momentum change for one photon all right now as there are n number of particles are coming and striking this n number of photons are coming and striking this per second okay say there are lot of photons which are packets of energy which are coming and striking this particular surface let's say that number is n okay per second then my dear students if i multiply the change in momentum that is delta p into n i am going to get nh upon lambda so this is going to be the total force i hope everybody understands this concept out here so what did we do in this case we simply found out the momentum the change in momentum right we got the change in momentum as h divided by lambda we got that 
fine then we multiplied it with number of photons which are coming and striking the metal surface per second so that will be the total change in momentum per second so total change in momentum per second what is it it is nothing but equal to the force my dear students chalo this is going to be used in one of the problems that we are going to come up very soon okay chalo let's have a look at the two other things that we had momentum ho gaya force ho gaya energy we know it is very simple एनर्जी के लिए कोई दिक्कत नहीं आनी चाहिए एनर्जी इज नथिंग बट एच म्यू एवरीबडी नोज इट एंड वेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट पावर वॉट एग्जैक्टली इज पावर द अमाउंट ऑफ एनर्जी पर यूनिट टाइम अगेन द सेम कंसेप्ट इफ यू डू पावर इट इज गोइंग टू बी एन एच म्यू सिंपल थिंग दिस इज द एनर्जी ऑफ वन फोटोन If n number of photons are actually coming and striking the surface per second, then what is the total energy which is coming and striking the surface? N per second, total energy per second will be equals to n h into mu. All right, students. So we got the expressions for what? We got the expressions for force. We got the expression for momentum. We got the expression for energy and power. Now let us use this concept, my dear students, in a numerical. clear it's a very interesting numerical and let us go ahead and rightly look at that uh but before we go ahead to that numerical we will go to that okay but before that let me talk about my dear students exactly what is happening in your photoelectric effect theek hai now you saw these photons were actually coming we were coming with certain force some energy and they were striking the metal surface now in the metal at an atomic level what was actually happening see these electrons i mean these are the photons which were coming and these electrons out here they may be at different energy levels right now in order for these electrons to leave the atom and go away and get ejected for that ye jo energy aa rahi hai this energy should be greater than the difference in the energy between the level in which it is there and to go to infinity that you have studied in the atomic structure my dear students so atomic level pe this particular thing must be happening so the threshold jo hota hai na the threshold is basically it will be able to take out the outermost one all right and if you give it the maximum energy the rest of the energy is going to convert into what it will get converted into the all right students so the energy or the photons which are coming they should be carrying enough energy so that they can take the electrons from that present energy level to outside all right students so that is the basic concept that we have here now let us move ahead and let us see that what is the phenomena on which this particular thing works okay so the photon must be coming with a certain amount of energy now as the photons are coming with certain amount of energy now this metal surface which is here which is the metal okay it has got some threshold energy that means the let me just explain this to you out here it has got some threshold all right now what do i mean by the threshold energy so that i will denote it as e not okay and say the energy which is coming here is e incident now this metal surface my dear students is going to eject electrons if your e incident is actually greater than your e threshold all right that is very clear agar if e incident is also equal to e not then they might eject but they might not go away anywhere do you know why because inka jo excess energy hoga that is e incident minus e threshold that will be equal to the kinetic energy of the electrons all right jo excess energy hoga between the incident and iska jo threshold hai theek hai what is the threshold the energy that it actually takes to go from the nth level to infinity all right so that is the threshold clear so wo jo excess energy mil raha hai where does it go it goes into the kinetic energy of the photo electrons so based on this there is something called as your einstein's photoelectric equation right now what does this einstein's photoelectric equation let us just have a look at that 
he said that the incident energy which can be written as h mu incident is equal to work function of the metal that is the threshold energy which is there that is called as the work function of the metal plus the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons plus the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons my dear students and let me tell you this is by far the most important and the only equation which is all the questions in this particular chapter that is photoelectric effect is revolving around this particular concept my dear students this particular formula sare question isi formula se ho jata hai to one and only formula which is kind of very very interesting is this clear now there are multiple ways of writing this particular formula so let's just have a look at that let's spend some time before we can go to the numericals all right so here this i can write it as h mu incident is equals to work function can be written as h mu threshold plus kinetic energy i can also write it as h c divided by lambda incident is equals to h c by lambda threshold plus kinetic energy all right my dear students so this is the basic formula which we have out here all right students let's just go ahead and explore problems on this concept now i hope let me summarize this entire thing photons coming it has some energy strikes the metal surface the metal surface has some threshold energy ke bhaiya aapki energy agar the energy of my threshold is more then only i'm going to eject photoelectrons otherwise no photoelectrons are going to be ejected and through the einstein's photoelectric equation that is simply the energy conservation that we have done so the incident energy is equal to the threshold energy plus the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons my dear students that is as simple and straight as that okay now what do we have here very interesting question this is based on the concept that we have learned previously force energy g and all that okay so they are saying there is a light beam which is balancing a plate of a certain weight okay very interesting isn't it light is balancing a plate of certain weight right but why is it able to do it because we studied that this light ray is exert some force which as the light rays are going in the upward direction it is exerting force in the upward direction and balancing the mg or the weight of this particular plate which is acting in the downward direction my dear students all right so let us just work it out students you saw that formula for force how much was equals to the force if you remember it rate of change of momentum rate of change of momentum how was it now they have told assume that the plate is perfectly absorbing so for the absorbing part right only for the absorbing part how much was it nh upon lambda clear so that was nothing but nh upon lambda this should be equals to mg very simple idea out here okay that's a very simple idea that we have out here but pucha kya gaya hai pucha gaya hai ki what is the power of the beam the question that is been asked to us is what is the power of the beam so we need to work around this particular thing a little more right so what are we going to do we are going to multiply the numerator and the denominator with c clear so what do you see here this part just observe this part n h c by lambda c by lambda is nothing but equals to what energy right so c by lambda is nothing but the frequency so h into frequency will be the energy of one photon n number of photons are coming and striking it so this expression is nothing but the power hai na dosto this expression is nothing but the power so i can say power divided by c is equal to mg which implies my power will be equal to cmg all right dear students now what is c c is the velocity of light 3 into 10 to the power 8 what is the mass mass is 10 grams all right so if i put down everything together what should i get it 3 into 10 to the power 8 into 10 divided by 1000 into 10 that is the value of g 0 0 0 cut all right so this will become 3 into 10 to the power 7 watt that means even for such a small plate 
you require a beam of very high wattage that is 3 into 10 to the power 7 i hope you can imagine i mean what should be the power of the light ghar mein jo bulb jalti hai that is like you know 60 watt 70 watt around maximum jo jata hoga 100 watt okay and here we are talking about a light which has got a power of 3 into 10 to the power 7 so i think you guys can imagine what a powerful intensity of beam that is required to balance a plate of 0.1 grams all right chalo guys i hope you enjoyed this problem let us go ahead to the next one what do we have in the next one let's just see it ha huh, this is an interesting question Okay, now generally your questions are in this way in your photoelectric effect. Alright, as I see this question came in 2006. So you should have a very clear and a good understanding of the electromagnetic spectrum. Especially like you know the wavelengths of visible light and uh, uh, the zone of ultraviolet and infrared and things like that. Okay, now they are saying the threshold frequency for a metallic surface corresponds to an energy of 6.2 volt okay 6.2 electron volt so the threshold energy threshold energy e naught is 6.2 volts right and the stopping potential now dosto yahan pe ye dikkat aa jati hai what is stopping potential theek hai i'm going to explain that all that things to you definitely in a short time to come okay but let me tell you stopping potential is basically the potential difference which can stop the highest energy of the electron Matlab, the electron has got some kinetic energy so the highest potential or say the potential which can stop the highly moving highest energy of the electrons which we have that is moving all right and it is able to stop it okay so that exactly is called my stopping potential right so we will understand that but right now let us take a leap of faith out here and try to see that stopping potential is if it is e it's v naught multiplied by e so that's the total energy that will be equals to half mv square or that is equals to the kinetic energy right now this stopping potential is given to me as 5 volts so kinetic energy will be nothing but 5 electron volt all right so a little leap of faith out here okay i'm going to explain to you in upcoming slides right now what do we have here threshold energy is 6.2 ev naught is 5 electron volt all right that means what should be the incident it will be nothing but the sum of this and this. So, incident energy will be 6.2 plus 5. That is nothing but 11.2 electron volt. Clear? Now, this would be corresponding to what wavelength of the light that is being incident? This is very important. These small things are kind of very, very important. Understand it. We know E is equals to HC divided by lambda. Now there is, see, I'm not going to put down the value of H out here. Planck's constant ki value dalo, C ki value dalo, and then find out lambda is co 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 90 se multiply karo. We will skip all that. Remember, ye jo HC hai, iska value yaad rakhna aapko. You need to remember the value of the HC. The value of HC is nothing but equals to 1, 2, 4, 0, 0 electron volt and strong. Dosto, agar aap isko yaad rakhoge, life will become very simple for you guys. Alright. Now, you divide it by lambda. Uh, lambda se divide karoge, to you will get the energy. So, energy is nothing but equals to what? 11.2. Thik hai? To lambda agar aapko chahiye, to lambda will be nothing but 12400 divided by 11.2. This will be approximately 1100 and strong. All right. Now, if you compare this 1100 and strong, and where does it lie in this electromagnetic spectrum, my dear students? Clearly, Reko, this is 4000 and strong. It is given in terms of nanometer. Okay. So, that will be corresponding to 4000 and strong. It is in this region, somewhere out here, 1100. So, what should be the answer, my dear students? Option B is the correct answer. That is, it is going to lie in the ultraviolet region. All right. I hope everybody got it. Halaki, kuch kuch question, isi type ke bohati simple bhi aap expect kar sakte hai. 
all right however the working of the question should be much faster which you can understand from the concept of that hc hc ki value yaad rakh lo 12400 electron volt angstrom ya fir 1240 electron volt nanometer theek hai so you know exactly what should be the unit of your lambda also fine chalo guys let's go ahead and understand the concept of photoelectric effect what exactly is happening dekho bahut hi simple tarike se main aap isko explain karne wala hu light is coming and striking this particular surface all right it has got like you know your excess of electrons so these electrons are going to get liberated right from here kuch electrons aapke yahan bahar bhi travel kar rahe honge and some electrons are going to be coming here all right so electrons are going to be attracted let me just show this to you so ye jo electrons honge this is like positively charged it is connected to the positive terminal of the battery so this electrons are going to go here in this direction and come here and move in the external circuit this way all right so we can see these electrons are moving out here theek hai so obviously the photo current will be opposite to this direction so electrons these are photo electrons moving in this direction so photo current will be in the opposite direction out here all right now what exactly is happening let me just tell you to ye aise aate aate yahan pe bahut sara electrons aa jata hai theek hai a lot of electrons get collected now we will come to that particular point but before that there is a concept which is called as your stopping potential right let us look at that first jo ki hum discuss kar rahe the kuch der pehle now what is this stopping potential now students initially what was happening this was connected to the positive terminal of the battery so it was attracting the electrons to so electron ko aa raha tha aa raha tha photo current was flowing no problem at all theek hai ab inhone kya kar diya polarity of the battery has been reversed so this became your negatively charged and this became your positively charged as a result of which what happens there must be an electron with a certain amount of kinetic energy all right and it must be moving in this direction but due to you your reversal now it is going to repel it no because it is having negative charge but to what extent that what extent of voltage should be applied that this highly energetic photo electron is not able to reach this particular point all right so let's say at that time the external voltage is v not let's say okay so this voltage came out to be v not e v not is the total potential energy so all this kinetic energy will get converted into the potential energy so this is the basic concept aur dosto isko hum ye bhi kehte hain as the sorry this is just that the kinetic energy is nothing but equals to e into the stopping potential that is there which is able to stop the highest highest energy highest kinetic energy wala electron ko bhi wo stop kar raha hai theek hai fine guys let us move ahead and let us look at something very interesting out here okay what do we have here aap dekh rahe hain ke light is being incident on the metallic surface now as the light is being incident on the metallic surface photo electrons are coming out theek hai that means on what factors are the are these photo current or these the generation of the photo electrons wo kis cheez ke upar depend kar raha hai very simple idea it totally depends on what the intensity of the light which is coming and falling on it dekho ye ek reference hai this is for a certain value of intensity you decrease the intensity the photo current is going to go down okay ultimately dekho kya hota hai aapne wo udhar voltage tha you were slowly increasing the voltage so the photo current was actually increasing photo current is increasing photo current is increasing and there is a certain point after which the photo current becomes what stable now what is the reason behind that very simple why does it become stable what is the saturation current ye saturation aata kyu hai dosto theek hai chalo iske liye let us go back to this one maine kya kaha tha aapko the photo electrons are getting liberated and they are getting attracted to the positive plate so here there will be lot of these photo electrons over here ओके तो बहुत सारा आ जाएगा तो जैसे जैसे आप इंटेंसिटी इस पर बढ़ा रहे हो ऑल राइट नॉट इंटेंसिटी बढ़ा रहे हो आप जैसे जैसे ये वोल्टेज बढ़ा रहे हो ठीक है तो फोटो मोर इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर गेटिंग अट्रैक्टेड टूवर्ड्स दिस 
because it is coming to be at a higher positive potential. So it will be able to attract more electrons. But at a time what happens is here electrons ki bheed lag jati hai. There is a lot of gathering of electrons out here. So another electron which must be actually coming. This will say okay stop we are already so many out there or out of us out here. So it is going to repel these electrons. All right. So as a result of which these electrons will not participate in the photo current. All right, my dear students, as a result of which you get a you get a saturation. OK, so that is the reason why we have the saturation current, my dear students. OK, so that's the reason why we have and if you increase the frequency, saturation will come at a higher level. If you increase the intensity, it will come at a higher level. So that is the basic concept out here. All right, students. Now, let us go ahead to the next question. All right, students. So let us look at this particular question. What do we have here? Very simple, very basic level question. Just the usage of the Einstein's photoelectric equation. Okay. What do we have here? The surface of the metal is illuminated with a light of 400 nanometers. All right. So that is the incident light which is coming and striking on the surface, which is illuminating it due to which electrons are going to get liberated. Now let's see what are they asked us. The kinetic energy of the ejected electrons is found to be 1.68. All right. Very good. So I think it's a very clear question, a very straightforward question, my dear students. What do we have here? Incident is HC upon lambda. So that is nothing but equals to 1240 divided by 400. That is the incident energy. All right. This is the incident energy. This should be equals to kinetic energy of the ejected photoelectrons, which is nothing but 1.68 plus the work function of the metal very simple very basic question hai, dosto, okay so how do we get it this will be approximately equal to if you see 3.1 which will tell me that 5 will be 3.1 minus 1.68 so that should be approximately 1.41 all right so option b is the correct answer all right as such, is me analyze ya think karne ke liye kuch zada kuch hai nahi. Bas directly remember HC value should be 1240. It totally depends on wavelength, nanometer, and strong me hoga to 12400. All right, that's it. Chalo guys, let's have a look at the next problem. What do we have here in the next problem? Let us move ahead. This is interesting. Thoda analytical hai. Theek hai. What do we see here? So they are saying the anode voltage of a photo cell is kept fixed. So you saw that anode was connected to the positive terminal of the battery. So that voltage is being kept fixed. All right. And the wavelength of the light falling on the cathode is gradually increased. All right. Then what do we see is gradually changed. So, so obviously yahan kya dekh hai? along the x axis the value of lambda is increasing. So for increasing value of lambda what will be the impact on the photo current. All right students. Achha, dekh hai. बहुत ही सिंपल सी बात है कि आप जैसे जैसे अगर वेवलेंथ इंक्रीज हो रहा है द वैल्यू ऑफ द वेवलेंथ इज एक्चुअली इंक्रीजिंग ऑल राइट देन इफ द वेवलेंथ इंक्रीजेस द एनर्जी डिक्रीजेस राइट दैट मींस द इंसिडेंट एनर्जी इज डिक्रीजिंग सो देयर विल बी वन पॉइंट इन टाइम व्हेन द इंसिडेंट एनर्जी विल गो लेसर देन द थ्रेशोल्ड एनर्जी and when that happens no photoelectrons are going to be ejected and if there are no photoelectrons ejected that means photo current will become equal to zero so option a option b option c option d which one do you think is the correct answer a ho nahi sakta because in this case photo current is increasing b same thing d kuch nahi samajh mein aa raha increase ho raha hai decrease ho raha so that is not giving us the clear indication whatsoever all right so it is very clear that option C, that is at a certain value of lambda, when it is going on increasing, the photo current will come out to be equal to zero. All right, students. Chalo, let's have a look at the next question. What do we have here as the next question? Another graph based problems, photoelectric equation chapter. There are a lot of questions which are basically linked or directly connected to graphs. All right. Now here in this question, the concept is about intensity. All right, they are saying what there is a source and there is a metal surface. So let's say this is my source. This is my metal surface and between them there is a certain distance. 
Now, because the light is coming from the source and hitting the metal surface, photo electrons are getting ejected. That is resulting in photo current. All right. Now they are saying that in, in case I increase the distance between the metal surface, like the distance is increasing, then what is the relationship between the current and the distance? Now the simple logic is the idea is about two relations. My dear students, the photo current, the photo current is directly proportional to intensity. All right. Whatever is the intensity of the light which is falling on the surface, zada intensity wala light fall karega, more will be the photoelectrons getting ejected. As a result of which, higher will be the photo current. All right, students. Now, let us understand this. What is intensity dependent on? How is intensity dependent on distance? Intensity is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. We are aware of this particular concept. That means photo current is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. Then as per this option D is the right suit. Okay. Linear C is also linear B is going this way. Definitely that is not the one correct one for I divided by D square. So option D is the correct answer. My dear students, I hope you enjoyed these two questions, which were basically based on graphs out here. Okay. Chalo, let's have a look at the next question, which is kind of very, very simple. Just to test your understanding K between the source and the metal plate, the distance is made half. What impact will it have on the number of photoelectrons emitted per second? Students, Aap distance ko half kar do. Intensity will become how much? Four times. Intensity become four times. Number of photoelectrons ejected also becomes how much? Four times. All right. So option C out here will be the right answer. This is just to consolidate your concept and finding out the link between the intensity and the photo current and the distance between the source and the metal surface. All right. Fine. Let us go ahead to some really interesting questions which are based on graphs and the formula of Einstein's photoelectric equation. Clear? Chalo. Now this we will spend some time out here. They are saying between A and B compared to A and B whose work function is going to be greater. So for that we will write down first of all E is equals to or whatever is the incident energy is equals to work function plus kinetic energy which can be written as EVS. Now this can be written as H into whatever is the frequency is equals to 5 plus EVS. All right, students. Now, if you look at this graph, what do we see? It's a graph between stopping potential, stopping potential, which will stop the highest kinetic energy electron. Okay. So this is the stopping potential versus frequency. Frequency is the incident frequency. All right. So out here we see clearly that is my VS can be written as h by e into f minus 5 upon e clear students now clearly from this equation that we see here isn't it of the format y is equals to mx plus c y is equals to mx plus c what is the slope slope is h by e what do we want we want to find out what is the stopping potential which will be like your c the y intercept so we will get the information from the graph my dear students from the graph if you draw or extend the y-axis and if you can stretch this of a and b tell me my dear students which has got a greater value of work function whose y-intercept is going to be greater obviously so we can clearly see here that b ka jo hai y-intercept zada hai b ka y-intercept a ke y-intercept se zada hai so the work function of a as compared to b will be very obvious less all right students hello guys let's go ahead to the next question i hope everybody understood how to relate between the graphs and the photoelectric equation that is one exposure that you must have okay now moving ahead what do we have in the next question oh this is a very interesting question now the graph is between stopping potential and one upon h we will still use the photoelectric equation alag se kuch use nahi karna dosto now we will try to write the equation in a different way. That's it. Okay. So, kya karenge? Bolo. 
Write the equation in a different way. Very nice. All right. So, what do we have here? 1 upon lambda. Then, incident energy can be written as Hc by lambda. That can be written as equal to EVS plus 5. Then, my dear students, Vs can be written as what? Hc by E into 1 divided by lambda minus 5 upon E. Look at this equation. This is also of the format of y is equals to mx plus c. Last time it was between Vs and F frequency. Frequency ko mene c by lambda kar diya. So that became like you know Vs and 1 divided by lambda. x 1 divided by lambda. Phi by e y intercept. But humse poochha kya hai? Poochha hai what should be the value of tan theta? What should be the slope? Clear? So, if you look at this, m is nothing but equals to hc upon e. So, hc upon e is the value of your tan theta, my dear students. I think everybody understood that. Okay. Chalo guys, let's have a look at the next one. What do we have here? They have asked us to find out the relation between or the ratio of phi 1 is to phi 2 is to phi 3. Okay. What is phi? Work function. So they have asked us to find out the ratio of the work functions of the three metals which are given out here. There are three different metals. Clear? Students, we had looked at the equation for Vs is equals to Hc upon E into 1 divided by lambda minus phi upon E. Clear? We had looked at in the previous slide. This particular equation. Now, at these points... What is the value of 1 by lambda? 0 0.001, 0 0.002 and 0 0.003. At these points, what is the value of stopping potential? Same, 0 for all of them. Okay? Then, if I make this quantity equal to 0, which is so useful for me, then I will get phi by E is equals to Hc by E into lambda. E, e gets cancelled. That means I can write down phi 1 is to phi 2 is to phi 3 is equal to 1 divided by lambda 1 is to 1 divided by lambda 2 is to 1 divided by lambda 3. All right. So I think that is very clear. 1 is to 2 is to 3 will be your answer. So that is option B, my dear students. Fine, guys. Let's go ahead and look at our last problem for today's session. Okay, I hope you are satisfied with the number of problems that I've done with you. If you're not, please write it in the comment section. I'll get to know and try to plug in more questions for my next session. Okay? Chalo, guys. What do we have in the next question? Ah, oh, this is interesting. What do we have here? They are saying if violet light is incident on all the three metals, metal 1, metal 2, metal 3, the violet light is incident on all the three metals. Which of the following metals will liberate photoelectrons? Now, for that, we need to know the work function or the threshold. Okay. The threshold wavelength of these metal surfaces. Can we have it? Yes. From this value, 1 by lambda is given to us. For all of them. Isn't it? So, we can find out what is the value of the threshold wavelength. Now, what is given to us? That is, violet light is coming and incident. Violet light ka kitna hota hai? 400 nanometer. Now, 400 nanometer will be able to take out from which all metal surfaces, my dear students? Obviously, if you see from metal 1 and metal 2, metal 3 ka threshold is greater. Lambda is less, but energy wise it is going to be greater because energy is inversely proportional to lambda. All right. I hope everybody understood this uh, entire concept. All right. Uh, however, I think I have got one more question for you. All right, let us take a break and let's have a look at this one. This is such an interesting one. We've got three metals, P, Q and R. Okay, so P, Q, R are the three metals. There are these graphs given between what? What is it? I, V. So that is I is photoelectric current versus voltage. All right. And their work functions are given to us. So let me organize the entire thing and show it to you. There are like three metals, P, Q and R. Their work functions, 2, 2.5 and 3 electron volt are given. There is a mixture of different wavelength ka beam. I mean a beam is coming which is having lights of 
these wavelengths 350 450 550 now if you look at this they are asking us which metal surface will produce the highest photoelectric current all right now for that what do i actually require i have known this 2 2.5 and 3 these are the work function i should know what is the energy of 350 450 and 550 then i will compare it with this let us look at this i did it 350 has a 3.5 electron volt 450 wavelength 2.75 550 2.25 all right now compare these two tables very simple idea from here p metal has got 2 350 3.5 so 3.5 my dear students will be able to take out from 2 yes so i can link this with p okay now 3.5 will be able to take out from q yes it will be able to take out from q also 3.5 will be able to take out from r yes it is greater than this one also so 3.5 will be able to take out photo photo electrons from p q r all the three metals clear acha next thing what about the second one 2.75 uh 2.75 will be able to take out from p and from q but not from r because it has got a higher threshold right students and what about 2.25 2.25 will be able to take out only from p because 2.5 is greater so what is happening to p p is ejecting electrons due to all the three wavelengths q due to two wavelengths and r due to one wavelength all right so photo current is going to be greater in which case let us look at the options once again so if i put the options out here which one do you think is the correct answer my dear students option a obviously because p is going to have the maximum photo current all right god bless you guys uh that is the end of our today session i hope you enjoyed the thing all right and uh, do comment whatever you have in your mind do like share make it reach out to maximum students in india because it's all free for everyone and education should reach out to each and every corner all right students so god bless you all and see you very soon with nuclear physics fine guys <laughs>